You probably bang Kappa or Poggers into chat a hundred times a day, but did you ever wonder where they came from? Here's the real story of how emotes ended up in Twitch chat and why Kappa is so damn special. How's it going? I'm Justin, Justin Khan from Justin.tv. If you spend time on Twitch, you know emotes are a big part of the culture but the emotes in chat predate even Twitch. Before there was Twitch, we started a live streaming platform called Justin TV. Before Justin TV was a platform, it was just one stream of yours truly. Yes, that's right. The idea was that I would stream my life to the internet 24 seven. And for some reason, people would wanna watch it. At least that's what we thought would happen. Back in 2006, before we even launched the show, we knew we wanted to make it interactive. We had this idea, we're gonna create our own live stream and we wanted people, the viewers out there to talk to us, to interact with us. And so we decided that in addition to having live video, we would also have chat so that the viewers could talk about whatever was going on on screen. From our apartment in North Beach, San Francisco, my co-founders, Michael, Emmett, Kyle and I argued incessantly on what should go into chat. We used to have arguments about everything. Should you be able to change the color of your name? Should the timestamps in chat have AM, PM or not? Literally, we spent an entire afternoon once arguing over AM, PM. But one thing we all agreed on was that we should all be able to add our faces to the chat. So you could type in J-Con style and it would pop my face up. Michael was Stone Lightning, Emmett was Optimize Prime, and Kyle was the ringer because he was so young but still so talented. Side note, these emojis still work on Twitch today, so tell me in the comments which ones you tried. Eventually, we launched the show and the rest is history. Justin TV, the show about me, didn't work at all, but it led us to create Justin TV, the platform, which did grow, and eventually we raised our first venture round of $2 million and hired a bunch more programmers to work on the site. Now, in those first couple of years, one of the programmers we hired was Josh DeSeno. And back then, we had a bus number of one, which means that if only one person was hit by a bus, our project would be completely fucked because there was critical knowledge in every person. Kyle worked on video, Emmett worked on the web servers, and Josh, our intern in his early 20s that had very, very limited real world programming experience at the time, was responsible for chat. And now we were terrible managers. I mean, we had really never worked at any jobs before, let alone manage anybody. In the year or so that Josh owned chat, we didn't really have any review processes and, and people would constantly push broken code to the site because there was almost no oversight. After the first couple employees, we'd stopped adding new face emojis to chat, but Josh was in charge of the code base and he found the Easter egg that was our emojis and decided, hey, he was gonna add his own. He made the keyword Kappa after the mythical Japanese monster, a strong turtle-like trickster. It took a while for the viewers to even figure out that Kappa existed. But eventually, someone did figure it out and figured out it was super easy to type. And they started typing it whenever people wanted to troll the streamer. By the time we realized that Josh had added himself to the chat, it was too late to tell him to take it out. And then somehow it stuck and became the internationally recognized symbol for, I'm trolling the shit out of you. Eventually, Josh left the company and we pivoted to Twitch, but the emojis remained and became part of the culture. And as the site grew, tons and tons more emojis were added. Now today, Kappa is everywhere. It's typed millions of times a day on Twitch. Josh even appeared on stage at the first ever TwitchCon. Now, before we get into those key lessons, you know what to do. Smash subscribe and turn on post notifications and I'm gonna love you forever. I'm giving brownie points to everyone who helps me get to my goal of 250,000 subs on YouTube. Okay, here's some lessons from the story. If you're the individual, ask for forgiveness, not permission. Josh actually created something of tremendous value by just doing it. We probably would have said no because we didn't want to have to add every employee to chat and it wouldn't have been fair to only let him put himself in. Number two, if you're management, you can't plan innovation. You need to create an environment where lots of experiments can happen concurrently. Number three, when you're young, you don't have to have it all figured out. You just have to get the right people around you to ask for advice. Now, that's something we probably didn't do enough of, and we could have benefited from getting great managers around us who had experience managing startups and learning from them. Okay, that's the video. 
I hope you enjoyed these early Twitch stories and let me know any other ideas or things you want me to post about in the comments. All right, I'll see you guys next time.